history. It's called the great man theory. It basically says history is forged by great men. The George Washingtons, the Alexander the Greats, the Jesse Waterses. Individuals drive the fate of civilization. And there's other theories about everything. You know, economics is the main driver. I personally believe geography plays a big factor, but leaders define reality. And we celebrate when good ones succeed and we celebrate when bad ones fail. We root for failure. And the best part about the United States of America is we can get rid of our own leaders if enough of us vote. And it can be frustrating when you live next to idiots because idiots put idiots in charge. But even sometimes idiots realize they picked an idiot. And that's what happened last night in Chicago. Chicago has been living in a nightmare for years. And this morning, the city woke up to good news. The Windy City is getting a new mayor. Thank God. And tonight we're going to tell you about what the Chicago election means for the Democratic Party. It's actually good news. It's good news for the country because prime times noticed a trend. But first, let's dance on Lori's grave. She can sing. Come on, baby, don't you want? Oh, and she can dance. She can even deliver pizza. Hey, <laughs> did you order thousands of new jobs and a pepperoni? If only Smollett had ordered pizza that night instead of going out for Subway. The kiss of death, though, for Lori in Chicago is when she crossed the Italians. She took down a Christopher Columbus statue and then rubbed it in the Italians' face. The mayor said she had a bigger male body part than the Park District lawyers on the call and Italians, and that she claimed to have the biggest male body part in the city. Now, after dissing the Italians, Lori pulled a Pelosi and went to the hair salon during COVID when no one else was allowed to. I'm the public face of the city. I'm on national media and I'm out in the public eye. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to um, have a haircut. I'm not able to do that myself. And so I got a haircut. So Lori didn't really realize she wasn't hired for her looks. She was hired because of her identity. The first black lesbian mayor of Chicago Oh, you better believe she shatters. Two glass ceilings. But Chicago quickly found out that the woman they hired for her race was a racist. When I look out at it um, across this podium, as I'm doing now, I don't see much in the way of diversity. The fact that the City Hall Press Corps is overwhelmingly white, has very little in the way of diversity, is an embarrassment. And so the black lesbian mayor would only talk to black reporters. She wouldn't even talk to white lesbians. Now, who can forget Lori's costume? She dressed up as a leprechaun on St. Patty's Day and the Rona Destroyer on Halloween. Lightfoot's great at a costume party, not really great in the mayor's office. She could do it all, well, except fight crime and cut her hair. And now she's paying the price. Lightfoot's the first Chicago mayor to lose re-election in 40 years. She only got 17% of the vote, after spending the last four years turning Chicago into a third world city. Murders up 60%, and you can't blame that on COVID. Gangbangers were waging war broad daylight. Kids got mowed down in drive-bys on their way to school. Chicago streets were soaked in blood. But Lori was in denial. Crime is not out of control in our city. In fact, crime is on the decline. All of our major indices showed a decline in, in um, crime and our homicides and our shootings year over year are down. That's a fact, sir. 